I want to weigh in on this walkaway movement. And for both of my loyal listeners, I want to promise you that I'm not going to be repeating myself like I kind of do sometimes. I think it's time for walkaway to have a level up. Now, me, I never walked away specifically from liberalism. I was never a liberal. It never appealed to me. I always saw through it. I always saw it for what it was. I saw it for what it was always, always. I, I just, I was raised conservative. My dad was a conservative all through the hippie years. And I grew up that way. My sister went off to the People's Republic of Bellingham. And, uh, you know, she had uh, an interesting, and I love my sister dearly, but uh, that never, uh, it never got me. It got, got my sister for a time, but it never got me. So I, you know, it is a question. Someone who's raised conservative and then became liberal and then goes back to being conservative, does that really walk away or is that walk back? It, you know, the thing is, I think walk away is coming full circle and it's not just about politics. I've had things I've walked away from. I walked away from Sunday morning. I've written about it extensively. Go look at my books. I'm in the stores. I have been part of the conservative movement. And, and if you're new to the walkaway movement, you need to know this. Conservatives have been wanting to walk away from the Republican Party for years. As I mentioned a few episodes ago in the, the Taiwan special series, the, the Republican Party allowed the Democrat Party, the, the, the KKK, anti-Republican North, anti-Lincoln who started the Republican Party, the, the KKK Democrats who want to take the guns away from people in the inner city while the conservatives want the people in the inner city to be able to get concealed carry permits. The KKK Democrats have marketed themselves as the party that helps black people, even though they don't ever at all in any way. And they were able to do that because the Republican Party isn't Republican. The Democrat Party helps the Democrats as much as the Republican Party helps the Republicans. Zero. It's all a gimmick. And, and they did this by wanting to do nothing. Martin Luther King stood up and did what Trump did. He made a difference. And, and he wasn't afraid to, to, to bear some teeth. You know, smiles have teeth. <laughs> you know, that's, you know, you got to have some teeth. And the thing that the white Republican pastors said to Martin Luther King Jr. was the same thing that the white Republican pastors were saying about Donald Trump. Yeah, we got to change, but that's not how to do it. Stop making waves. Stop being so mean and venomous. Well, I've been in Asia 10 years and I've had my human rights violated by the Taiwan third world legal system. I know what it's like to have the system against us. And I know that change doesn't come by being polite. You, you go to a government... You tell them this is a problem. They don't care. You go to a company. I call it a big fat company in America. I said, your franchise in Taiwan, I have the recording. They told me that they hate foreigners, which means they hate me. I mean, because I was the foreigner in the conversation. And, and they just hung up on me. Now, they know about the problem. They're not going to fix it. They'll only fix it if there's a Twitter storm. You show me where an important change happens without acting like Martin Luther King Jr. or Donald Trump Sr., I, you know, that, that, so, I mean, this, this is the, Trump and MLK Jr. both did the same things in their day, and they were both hated by the same groups of people for the same reason, the white Republican pastor types. And I, I don't mean all pastor types, it's just, let's be nice to everybody. Let's, let's, you know, so, this is what I want to say about the walkaway movement that I've already said, and I want to talk about why we need to level up. I didn't walk away from liberalism. But as a conservative, I've been wanting to walk away from this surrender wave of the white flag Republican Party, which really just wants to put a bunch of elitists in charge. The voters for Republicans are not in favor of the guys in Washington having more power than the voters. I mean, that wouldn't make sense. See, the, the, the guys in Washington, it's, it's, they've been saying this for years. If you're in walk away, you need to know this. If, if you just walked away from liberals, you need to know this. During the Obama years, we had McCain and we had Romney as the people running against, uh, you know, people that were there. 
And the conservative voters kept saying, it's like the Republican Party are the Washington generals in a Harlem Globetrotters game. They're just there to pretend to play well so that they can lose. I don't know if you know about the Harlem Globetrotters and the Washington Generals who always lose so that the Harlem Globetrotters look cool. That's what, the, the, as far as the issues go with Republicans and Democrats in Congress, the Democrats are the Harlem Globetrotters who always win and the Republicans are the Washington Generals, interesting name, who always put up a valiant fight and skillfully lose. Now, the way the Democrats are always losing is they get their laws passed and it makes things worse for their people. It's like drinking salt water. It's like you think it's going to solve the problem and it makes it worse. The Democrat policies make things worse and people don't know it because their instincts. It's, it's, like, it's like the way to kill a wolf. You take a knife, you get it bloody wet, you, like you dip it in blood, freeze it, bury it, a wolf will go along in the snow and smell the knife, he'll start licking it, and he doesn't feel, because his tongue's numb, he doesn't feel when he, his, the blade cuts his tongue, and the wolf just keeps licking the knife more and more and more until he bleeds to death because he's been licking his own blood. That's what Democrat policies do. That's part of the, the, the little game that they've got going. So they do it differently, but in politics, it's, it's it, in voting in Congress, it's the Republicans who always have to lose. That's why this thing with Kavanaugh is, is such a big deal, because the Republicans are actually going to not lose. At least that's what it's kind of looking like, sort of. That's what, that's what the party was hoping for. Love Kavanaugh or not, in, 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 in the whole, if you're from a walkaway movement, you need to know this. If you're from a walkaway conservative, the Republican voters didn't know if the Republicans in Washington had the guts to vote for Kavanaugh. That was the inside baseball there, right or wrong. I mean, you know, you have a Republic, you have a Democrat voter with a Democrat Congress and a Democrat president, and he has a Democrat judge. Well, the Democrat voters hope that the Democrat Congress votes for the Democrat judge that was nominated by the Democrat president. That's kind of a normal thing. Now, I can say that again. We're Republicans. Like it or not, so, whose side, whatever, that's the normal thing. In politics, it's like, what? The Republican voters actually expect the Republican president's Republican judge nominee to be approved by the Republican Congress? Oh, why would they do that? Like, that's what the attitude is. It's like, are you mentally ill? Do, do you, do you, uh, you know, fish want water and food, uh, d d you know, velociraptors want to eat people and, you know, the spectators at Jurassic Park, like good, bad is a different question. Now, don't you know how people are going to act, you know? <sighs> so this is what, you know, walk away has been about politics generally. But there are many Christians on Sunday morning who've been wanting to walk away from the Sunday morning culture because it's just a wimpy, useless culture. The Bible does not require this bureaucracy that eats up all this money, builds these incredibly expensive buildings that are empty six days a week and only filled an hour or two on one day of the week, and get pastors that earn $70,000 a year send their kids to college when those pastors don't know how to help people with their real problems and actually make a difference. They fail as much as the Washington establishment does. You've got all these conservative Christians who don't want a centrally planned government, but they want centrally planned Christianity with a Christian bureaucracy called Sunday morning, so-called church, so-called church, not really church. Church is just Christians getting together talking over uh, coffee, let's say. So there's been a lot of contradictions and you have a lot of people who've been wanting to walk away from a lot of things. And if you just walked away from liberalism, you need to know that the people that you're thinking about joining have been wanting to walk away from a lot of other things. So we need to level up and we need to walk away somewhere together. Where to? Well, I'm gonna, I've already talked about that in other episodes. I'll probably talk about it more. I'll have to watch more.